Hello there, welcome back. And uh, I don't know what we're doing today, but Braggy will let us know. Anyway, let me introduce myself. Gail Thorson, warrior, runecaster, and storyteller. And I am Braggy. I am the son of Magnor, as you very well know. But some of you may be new and you won't know. There you go. So, Braggy, uh, I'm sitting here like a pixie on a toadstool. Uh, what are we going to do today? Well, today we're going to be doing another unboxing video. Oh, yes. Ooh. But let's just talk about unboxing. How have you been enjoying the ones we've done so far? Well, we have done a couple, haven't we? It's interesting because you never tell me what's in these boxes until they're open. Oh, no. And it's a bit like Christmas as a kid because you think, well, come on, tell us what's open. Here's the box. Oh, the box of doom. Now, at Christmas, I used to like, fill the box and shake the box to try to figure out what it is. Like, can you figure out what it is? Broken glasses. <laughs> I don't know, pretty solid. Right. But uh, time will tell. So yes. um, it's always exciting. Um, maybe people have a comment to make on it and can send it in as to what they think it is doing now. Uh, yes, um, good idea. We'll get back to them. What do you um, think it is? Is it a hat? Is it a sandwich? Is it a very, very thin helmet? Is it a mouse? Is it a, a massive book of folk tales for Eggle to learn? Or is it a tax bill? No. 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 It's Dark Age. It's oh. Dark. Possibly oh. Saxon. Oh, right. uh, so we have done one or two of these videos, and, and in a minute we will open up this, this, this box, not the video. You can't really mm. open up a video, can you? Oh. And, uh, and we'll talk about what's in the box. But yeah, so far we've filmed a couple of these. Now, so far, I've not published the one on the Tillerman beads and Thor's hammer because I got to re-edit that at some point. And I think I'll do that again soon and put a nice looked pack on it and make it a bit more bright and colourful and check to make sure that my address isn't on it. So that one will be coming out in the future. And there will also you'll also be seeing, although by, by now you may have seen it, I don't know, um, the unboxing for 800 subs where I pranked Eggle. Remember that mm. one? When I pranked you with... You have to watch the video to find out that one. So, I've got a knife. Ah! This is the modern craft knife. Very good for the... Uh, Crafting. Yeah. <laughs> and here's the box. Deep parsley. Oh, right I didn't notice there's a return dress on the back of that. Oh, That's right. good. Good. So, we're going to break in. I think we can guess it's nothing breakable. No, it's not, a, it's not a pair of Anglo-Saxon grass beakers, Eggle. I think that will make it more of a uh, ding, dingly noise. Yeah. Just being careful not to cut you. I did notice that my life flashed before my eyes, and it was boring. Whoa. Well, now you're on the channel as a professional host, and uh, taken taken over from the uh, infamous, but somehow lost uh, T.K. Thorkelson, uh, in infamacy and fame is bound to happen. Oh, well, there you go. I say, uh... So I've got the box open. Now, I'm going to let you guys see what's in here first. There you go. What is it? Um, you, can, you, can, you can open them up now. Try not to knock the box up. All right. Shoes. Shoes. Very nice shoes. Yeah. yeah. I don't know who made let's, them. Let's get them out and we'll just get rid of the box. Give us the box. Now, if you've got a cat, cats love playing in boxes. Oh, they do, and children. Yeah. So I got these online. Mm. I saw them the other day on eBay, mm. and they're size 11, 12, mm. so ideal for me. Yeah. And a bit big for you, I suppose. Well, yeah, I could always pat them out with newspaper. But uh, I paid £20 for them. God, that's cheap. With, with the postage, yeah. was was £5, so all together these were 15 quid. Uh, plus £5 postage. Yeah. Now, I've not tried them on yet. Go on, slip them off and slip them on. Oh, you've got to... Uh, have a look. You've got to thread them up. And the, they've been used a little bit. Yeah, not that much. Not, not a great deal. I mean... These cost over 50 quid. Oh, yeah. And it's pretty much the same thing. Whether they're made in England or made somewhere like China or... Well, they're, um, they're made in Derby, these were. I would. Ah, there's a good thing. Here the hill plate. Now, I haven't got one of those and that's... There's a cautionary tale. Yes, well, we've got to uh, sort it out with a hill plate. Yeah. I thought you just explain what a hill plate is on a shoe for people. When you're walking along, these shoes are so soft, you get 
the heat of the sole will stay there and the upper will press down on it and you get a ridge. Well eventually that ridge wears out and you've got a big slash across. What a heel plate does, which you can't see in here, but there's like that's, a... That's a heel plate there. Look. Yeah, it's like a cup that holds them stiffer than the rest so you don't get that. And uh, that's the sign of a good quality shoe. So Did I... you just talk there? I'll show you a bad shoe. Um, do you want me to carry on yeah, lacing? Carry on. Um, back. So here we go. Oh, I've got to figure out the lacing on these. Now, this is it was my first pair of shoes. Mm. I got these from Lynn mm. um, some years back. But as you can see on these, the heel plate is non existent. Mm. And what happens over time is that you can see it's crumpled down at the back there because you gradually walk on this bit yeah. and your foot will start spreading on this because there's no plate to stop you from doing that. So what happens is that you start wearing away like you do here is a hole and it becomes all crumpled and gradually your boot will become more flat at the back and lose its shape. Yeah, some soles have them built in, don't they? They have like a point tapers to the end. You score it slightly, fold it over and stitch it or glue it down. But it also makes you think, how old is the heel plate? Because is it, you know, I, I bet it goes back to the Iron Age, surely. Well, you know, let's just try these on. I'll take off my boots. Siemens boots. They're not the most easiest thing to get off or get on. And perhaps you could talk about these. Pooey, that reminds me, I've got to get some cheese. Boom, boom. <laughs> now... These actually are a status symbol. These had to be for Ooh, yes. um, free men, and it was lords were only allowed to wear these. Really? Oh, yeah. Right. It was a sign of well, you see, all that is excess, isn't well, of it? Of course, it is. Yes. So needed, really. Uh, a lot of these sea boots were made from seal skin, and because seals spend a lot of time in water. Uh, they're very good water resistant boots. That makes sense. And here we've got a nice gripping thread. Ideal on a long ship. On, on this got... one there isn't any. No. You, you can see the nails. Mm. But see the difference? They're the two. That's see. got a grip. Yeah. And an extra heel. See, if this gets wet, which it will do, on a long ship, well, if you're in a village, you fall over on your backside, you look a bit silly. No, hold on. Do that on a long ship, you're over the side and you're dead. So you need something to grip, either this or bare feet. This one, there's one layer of leather. Mm. On this, there's four, mm. which makes the boot much stronger. And this, as I say, is a boot for lords. And so, I must say, these are quite comfy on my feet. Yeah. Hey, so there you go. Turn, I'm not doing yeah. them up. I've got to figure that one out afterwards. To be honest, turn shoes are far more comfortable than slippers. Yes. Because I find that with slippers, I tend to, as I walk, I walk a strange way. This leads to the side. These, comfortable. And how old do you think slippers are? Well, I don't know because they'd have worn them out east far more than here. Uh, I do like my slippers. That's I do. A sign of old age, but um, yeah, they must go back ages. I mean, with some of the turn shoes I've seen from uh, Viking digs, they look more like slippers I like they say they're women's but you know they look more like slippers rather than shoes as shoes tend to be tight you have some form of securing whereas these are just like half finished shoes so where do you buy your slippers on and let's say you had 50 pound tomorrow to spend on, on some slippers wow you know would you go to Marks and Spencer's and buy some or would you go to Primark well last my pair I wear of Primark and they were six quid yes the, if you want to go really flash, I went on the market and spent £10 on a pair of slippers. They last me about a year. I am a gentleman of leisure. Indeed. Uh, I wear them quite a lot. The last pair I got were very comfortable, the Guinness slippers, and I was given to me by my mate Rob. Hi, Rob. Hello, Bob. Um, but Leave a comment. But they stretched. Ah, uh, yes. They were very soft, and I stitched the back. And they stretched again. Well, I can't keep. I nearly fell over and broke my neck. 
I don't think they make slippers like they used to. I'm just like socks. I don't make socks like they used to. Because mm. I buy a pair of socks or you buy half a pair, a dozen pairs of socks. And mm. Within three months, I've got the heel going through, my big toes poking through. And I've got socks from the 1990s that's still going and are fine. Mm. And I think to myself, what's happened in the last 20 years to make socks so bad? Another thing that's changed a lot, probably for your time, is shirts. Shirts, yes. They used to have long tails. Long tails, think. yes. Uh, I assume, you know, fashions change. But I can still remember also shirts, a bit like this, we have buttons to there. We used to have them at school. You slip them on so you, you don't get a gaping um, thing at the bottom. Nice long um, yeah. things. Well, let's go back to the shoes now that we've been talking about Marks and Spencers, which is a very posh shop in the UK. It's I, a lovely shop. I do believe Marks and Spencers are in America. I may be wrong there. Possible. Um, and um, Primark, which is like a cheap shop full of chaps. <laughs> um, no, I'm going to pull you up about that. They're well, uh, inexpensive, like there. inexpensive clothes. Which yes, but are, they don't last. No, but they're not meant to. No. I, mean, I bought a suit, uh, four piece, that's two pairs of trousers, a waistcoat and a jacket. 50 quid. Well, I mean, you know, okay, I could have gone to a, re a, a retail outlet and spent about 200 and just got a two piece. It does what it says, that's it. Uh, handkerchiefs, socks, I get a lot of my waistcoats from there as well. I wonder if these are foreign and somebody brought them on holiday. Because uh, I imagine you go to Africa, you probably buy to buy shoes like this still. I have a feeling I know who made this. This is the guy who made these. Possibly. Because if you look underneath my shoes... Does it have the number right? Yeah. In which case... Now, I can tell they're hand stitched, they're not being machine stitched, that's mm. hand stitching here because of the irregularity. But as I say, on the bottom of this one, you've got, you know, I'll see if it's still in evidence. We'll compare Eggle's shoe to these shoes and then finish the video. Similar. In fact, I say they're made, made by the same person. Now, you look at that, folks, oh, there's Eggle's shoe. And you've got a, a, a ten underneath, and you look at this shoe, identical. Yeah, and that's JW. There you go. Oh, also, Primark socks. Yes, well, some days I wear authentic socks, which I've got an odd pair of on, and some days I don't. Ah, uh, but is it black? Ah, no, <laughs> no, 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 they're very, 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 very dark blue. Yeah, uh, got to be a priest, I think, to have black socks. For those of you, that's a reference to the great series that was on telly called Father Ted. Um, what was it that they taught Father Jack to say? Ah, that would be an economical question, was it? Drink! Yes. Other things you won't let me say. Arse! You can say that. Or arse biscuits. There you go. Big girl's brass. If, if you never heard of Father Ted, type it in YouTube. You'd laugh. Unfortunately, they're both dead now. There's a hard little hand yes. and still around. And yeah, he's Mrs. still around. Mrs. Doyle. Sorry if I've forgotten your name. She's a wonderful actress because yeah. she was in something, and I couldn't believe it with Mrs. Doyle. Yeah. She's a very attractive lady. Would you like a cup of tea, Father? Ah, you will, you will. We you will. Have a cup of tea. We have a cup of tea. Uh, you used to get that on camp in the 90s. Yeah. It was like, they'd be like, every regiment will have a campfire. And all you could hear when well, every campfire was drink! Father, Father Jack quotes. Yeah. That, that was the 90s. Well, oh. I think we have finished this video. We have unboxed. We have shown you some shoes. Time to move on. Okay. But what should they do, Egon? Uh, leave a comment. Leave us a comment. Uh, we will get back to you. And uh, we'll, we'll answer you, but it does take a bit of time. And if you have found this to be both funny and entertaining, then I urge you to go and share it on Reddit. Or there you go. Comment, or leave us a subscribe. Be a subscriber. Yes, if you're new and you're an old subscriber, then stick around and mm. say hello. Well, I think uh, that's about it. Isn't it, it is about it for now. So, from me, Egil Thorson, goodbye. It's goodbye from Braggy. <laughs>